like to... So I was supposed to be the uh, keynote speaker back in 2020. And uh, when they contacted me and gave us this, hey, you know, with, you know, we'd love to have you kind of be the keynote speaker this year. I dusted off my old presentation. I started going through and realized there had been a lot of changes between 2020 and today. So I ended up making a few changes to it. Uh, one of the things, for example, that took place during the pandemic, and I call it my uh, pandemic passion projects, was I ended up writing an autobiography. Uh, but let's get into a little bit about my background. It's somewhat unusual. I started being a started off being very technical, started off as a computer programmer, made my way to even be more technical as a database administrator, and then I realized I enjoyed working with people more than I did databases. So I wanted to kind of make this transition over into the functional areas. Uh, so I went, to, uh, went back to college in the evenings, got an MBA focused in management and really organizational behavior, popped back out of that and went into project management. As a project manager, I was highly successful in the sense that I failed on 100% of the projects that I worked on, <laughs> which was kind of typical at that time. Uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas had a position open where they were looking for someone that could start a software QA function, and I applied, and I, and I applied for the job. During the interview, they said, why shouldn't we hire you? And I said, it's pretty simple. He says, I'm an adjunct college professor, and I've been teaching classes on systems analysis and design, project management, programming classes, and I realized that there was a gap between theory and, and reality. I said, it just truly wasn't working. And I said, I really want to study projects to find out why they were failing. So they took me out of the line of fire from being a project manager, and I spent two and a half years literally analyzing methodology, project techniques, everything you, you could imagine. Then I went back into project management and was 100% successful on every project I worked on after spending that two and a half years basically analyzing failures. I then, after 10 years after I got my MBA, decided that I wanted to learn more about the business processes and best practices. Uh, so I returned to college, this time I went to UT Dallas and got a master's in accounting and passed a CPA exam. And by the way, CPA stands for couldn't pass again. <laughs> uh, RE, the computers plus accounting. Uh, and 10 years after that, by the way, I ended up returning to UT Dallas and got a certificate in supply chain management because a lot of companies were going to just-in-time technology. One of the big lessons I learned coming out of software QA is every methodology is perfect until you have people. <laughs> and so my focus was truly working on how to go about establishing better relationships with people. How many of you have ever, ever participated in a race like a marathon or half marathon, five or 10K? You've had like five to 10,000 people in the races. I've been fortunate in that I have had eight top 50 finishes in marathons. I've also run seven marathons with 50 or fewer people. <laughs> but I, I still count all of them as top 50 finishes. Uh, one of the most interesting marathons was the Tailwinds Marathon in Copenhagen, where I'm proud to say I was the first American to cross the finish line, and I came in 47th place. <laughs> So, and by the way, they, they, they had a five-hour cutoff limit. <laughs> so it was quite an experience running there. A little bit more details about my experience as a marathoner. Um, I've won age group and weight division trophies. In high school, I was a sprinter. I weigh over 200 pounds. But I'm still kind of pushing my way through marathons. I have a personal best of three hours and 36 minutes. A personal worst uh, 7 hours and 28 minutes, which was on the Great Wall of China. Uh, I've uh, worked, in the, worked in the distance running, also on the side of, I guess you would say, race organizers. I'm on the board of directors for the Dallas Marathon. Uh, I was previously on the board of directors of Running USA. 
And uh, I'm probably one of the few people who has written articles for both computer world and letters world. <laughs> As she mentioned before, um, I've been running marathons since 1982. One of my first goals was to run 50 marathons in one state. I'd like to say that I was economically challenged and was supporting a family of four. So I couldn't exactly justify hopping on a plane and flying someplace to run marathons. So I literally ended up running 50 marathons in Texas uh, prior to completing marathons on seven continents. Uh, when I completed marathons on seven continents in 2007, I was actually the first black person in the world to ever run marathons on all seven continents. And in fact, the clothes that I was wearing in this photo are actually in the Smithsonian Museum of African American History and Culture. Uh, in 2007, I finished seven continents. In 2009, I completed my 100th marathon. In 2013, I finished marathons in all 50 states. There were fewer than 50 people in the world that had ever completed the marathon hat trick. And I was happy to, be, to have been one of those 50. Well, uh, this year, I was inducted into the National Distance Running Hall of Fame for not only my running activities, but also for my activities that began just working in the running industry overall. The question people always ask me is, why do I run? When I was about eight years old, I was diagnosed with a pre-diabetic condition, and the doctor said that I would go on insulin. While I was in college, I read a book where they said diabetics who are dependent on insulin could either decrease their insulin intake or go completely off of insulin if they maintain the fitness program. That book was written by Dr. Kenneth Cooper here in Dallas. And if you're familiar with the Cooper Clinic, that was he, he was the one that wrote that book. Uh, years later, I ended up talking to him, and uh, this is one of the letters that he said. So one of the things that I did was, uh, in 1976, I set various goals for myself. Uh, weekly goals, not missing more than two consecutive days without a workout, monthly goals of running about 100 miles, 100 miles a month, and I had this lifetime goal of averaging running, walking, or crawling three miles a day, on average. I've maintained a handwritten running journal since 1979. As of the end of last year, I've logged almost 48,000 miles. If you notice, uh, my average was 3.04 miles a day. 